Thanks, Elizabeth, for holding it down. Hi, everyone. Uh, sorry to keep you waiting. I was stuck in some very uncharacteristic Vegas traffic. Oh, it's I guess it is like uh, rush hour, approaching rush hour. Um, how is everyone? So I see Elizabeth has gotten you guys on some trivia. Like what's what's catch me up on what's been happening. We did some trivia. We got people from all over the US and Canada. Um, and everyone's really jazz on hot pot and especially star anise. I'm learning a ton about how you can cook with star anise. Really? What like like what? What do we got? Mike's um doing a boar brine with star anise. Um, Tanya's using an Indian dishes, sangria. Mm. Um, there was a Haitian crema that Yolanda's doing, which is amazing. What about cassia bark? Have you guys talked about cassia bark yet? We have not talked about cassia bark. Okay. So, got a lot of spices here. Um, do we have anyone actually in the kitchen, like cooking and making hot pot from scratch, or are we, or is this like? A I'm using her base. The base? Yeah. <gasps> yes. And your red uh, pot, too. Oh, yay. We've got matching pot. A little big extension cord around my desk table so I don't get up quick and land the whole thing in my lap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, obviously, there is a hard way and an easy way to do hot pot. <laughs> Um, and you can make it as hard as you want on yourself. And then you can also make it as easy as you want. So with our flat edging hot pot base, um, that's the easy route. And uh, I see Betty is going that route. So that's great. Um, has has anyone in anyone else in this chat like had our hot pot base before? No? Yeah. Yes, and yeah. I'm hoarding, I'm hoarding until they're back in stock. The rest. Oh, amazing. Yeah, yeah. Tanya, they're... I'll make a deal for you. I got two extra. <laughs> <laughs> black market, not <laughs> five. Takes makers, black market. I love it. Um. Okay. So hot pot. Um. I guess the harder way to do it is to make the soup base from scratch, and that. You know, there's many different ways to do it. You can even just use like a stock. You can use a vegetable stock or a, um, or uh, like a chicken or whatever bone broth. Um, but the uh, and then or there's also seafood in China. There's also different types of hot pot where it's like um, really light, like a coconut water broth. Ooh. So there's a really popular one called a coconut chicken hot pot where they just put like a boiled, like a, you know, boiled chicken in um, coconut water. And it's actually really, really delicious. It's a lighter option. But in Sichuan, um, the hot pot soup base is usually super flavorful and, um, you know, to the point where, you know, all the flavors really in the soup and in the seasoning of the soup so that when you cook your ingredients in it, it just absorbs the flavor of the broth and you don't actually need to use much um, uh, dipping sauces, you know, afterwards. So it's not like the type you might be familiar with here where you go up to like a sauce bar and you mix yourself like a super, you know, flavorful uh, dipping sauce, including like chili oils and soy sauce, vinegar, whatever. In Sichuan, what you typically see is like just garlic, minced garlic, sesame oil, and cilantro. And that's mm -hmm. the dipping sauce. Um, because you shouldn't like, usually a good hot pot restaurant, the soup base is already so flavorful, you shouldn't really need to dip it in anything else. Um, and then our soup base is, was actually like, I was surprised to find out when we launched it, it was like the only all natural option available in the US market. Everything that I've seen since um, in stores has all had different forms of preservatives um, and artificial flavors, whether it's like MSG or, you know, artificial like, you know, chicken flavors and stuff like that. Um, 
So, so yes, yeah, so that's good. And then within Sichuan soup bases, there's also different types. We have um, the most common one is uh, actually made with beef tallow. So flavor is everything in Sichuan cuisine. And uh, you know, any chance that there is to kind of amp up the flavor, um, they'll do it. So beef tallow, even more flavorful than just like a soybean oil or some kind of oil uh, based hot, hot pots soup. So um, with the beef tallow, it makes it really fragrant. It also makes it really heavy. Um, but again, you're not supposed to drink the soup, right? So you you cook the food in the soup. The the food gets flavored with the tallow, um, and uh, you know, and, and and if you're not dipping it in anything else crazy, then it's not it's not um, overwhelming. But uh, beef tallow hot pot base is actually illegal to import into the US from China because it contains animal products and there's no animal products allowed to be imported into the US from China. So what you typically see on store shelves here is more like a, just like a vegetable oil based soup base. And that's what ours is made of. It's made of the same type of like really high quality Sichuan rapeseed oil um, and soybean oil. And, um, but like occasionally you do see in like a 99 ranch, like a block and it looks like, I don't know, like a solid block of fat with like chilies on it. And it is soup, it, it's it's called like hot pot soup base. Um, and those are usually like somehow smuggled and there's like some kind of back channel and <laughs> they've made it and they made their way onto the shelves of like your local Asian grocery store. Um, I don't know how they do it, but you know, we obviously didn't want to take that chance even though, um, you know, I would have loved to bring in a uh, beef tallow soup base. So that's kind of like, that's kind of like a little overview of hot pot soup bases. Are there any questions? Any thoughts, questions? No? Okay. So if not, you know, I've got a whole bunch of ingredients here that I can just go over. Um, and also, you know, hot pot is, is pretty like free form. There's no rules. So if you guys have the recipe and the cookbook, you know, it has a guideline, but there really isn't a rule. And like I said, you know, you've got the spicy, like beef tallow all the way on one end, and then you've got like totally flavorless coconut water on the other end you do what you want. You do what like is best for your diet. Like if you're eating light right now, we're in January, everybody's like, you know, watching out for their health. Um, you could try the coconut water route. It's really delightful. Um, or just like a really nice, you know, chicken broth or, or vegetable broth. Um, and then if you want to amp up a little bit of flavor, you can dip it in some, in a little dipping sauce, right. Of like chili crisp or vinegar, minced garlic. Um, so no rules. And I don't even think I have all of the ingredients in you know, the, the form of the, my recipe. So I'll just show you what I've got and then we can kind of go from there. All right. Any, any thoughts, any questions? We can also just keep talking. I know a lot of people are not in front of their kitchens, so you know it's probably not the most entertaining to like watch me put stuff into a pot. Um, hey Jing. Yes. Yeah. Um. So you were talking about a uh, not spicy sauce that dipping sauce that is used, and I have some of Mila's chi um, sauce with scallions and chopped ginger. Oh. The, gr the green stuff. I, I guess that's similar to what you're talking about. I, I mean, you can literally use anything as a dipping sauce. So let's talk about dipping sauces actually, because that's the fun part. Um, so dipping sauces, feel free to throw into the chat like what you guys normally use, but um, I love a good dipping sauce bar. 
Um, I think what I usually like to have is like a balance of savory, acidic, spicy, maybe even a little nutty. Um, so I will make a sauce usually with like a little bit of soy sauce, a little bit of black vinegar, a lot of minced garlic. Um, I love my aromatics. So I'll put in tons of like chopped scallions, chopped cilantro, aged soy. That's really nice. So it has like a little bit of like a, what a sweeter flavor, maybe. Um, you can do ginger if you want. Usually um, I stick with like garlic, scallions, and cilantro. And then once you've got like the savory aspect from the soy sauce and the black vinegar acidity, um, I like a little bit of heat. So I'll put in a bit of chili crisp. Um, and then for fragrance, I'll add some sesame oil, just a little dash of sesame oil. And uh, depending on my mood, I might want it a little bit thicker. So then I'll put sesame paste in it as well. Um, so sesame paste. I mean, to show you, there's many different kinds you can buy at the Asian store. This one is the one I just picked up. And uh, what makes it different from tahini, as you can see from the color, it's very like dark. Tahini is usually um, quite white in color. And that's because this has been roasted. And that's why it's more fragrant because it's been roasted before it's ground. Mm -hmm. um, Hannah says, I like soy sauce, black vinegar, chili crisp, toasted ground sesame seeds. Yeah, sesame seeds is great as well. And then, does anyone know what this is? Have you guys seen this? So this is one of my favorite dipping sauces. It's it's called sa cha jiang. So um, kind of like, it's called like sa cha. So like S-A-C-H-A. -A. Um, it, it, I'll, I'll open it up and show you in a sec. What, what's it, what it's got inside is like dried fish, dried shrimp, chili, chili powder. Ginger, shallots, garlic, sesame, um, and some oil. So what it is, is it's really, really umami. It's almost like a seafood, like a satay, satay sauce, you know? Um, and this is an amazing, they also, you'll hear it referred to as like Chinese barbecue sauce. It's great. Yeah, sasha is very yummy. Um, yeah, that's one of my favorites. And then what else? What else? Oh, um, yeah, sesame oil and sugar. So this is called sa cha jiang. So J just spelled it out, S-H-A-C-H-A. -A. Um, but if you kind of like take a screenshot or something of this uh, of this uh, picture and bring it to your store, you'll see this. Thank you, Melvin. Bullhead. Sha barbecue sauce, exactly. Nice. Um, and then another one that I really like is, is this. This is, this is a uh, fermented tofu. Ooh. So fermented bean curd chunks. So, um, okay, this is like really funky. It is like the Chinese equivalent of a aged cheese, all right? It's when they take tofu and actually like ferment it, usually in a brine, like kind of a salty, watery brine. Um, sometimes it's oil-based, but it's, and then, you know, it could be um, flavorless or not flavorless. It's very flavorful. It's um, a deep, funky, salty type of flavor. And um, sometimes it can be like in a chili oil kind of brine as well. So this one's spicy and I love it. And it kind of, and when you take it out, it looks like a cube, but it melts like a cheese or like a, like a soft cheese, almost like a borzen. And you can mix that into your dipping sauce and then it'll become thick and just really umami. Like I love, 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 love this. Yeah. What else am I missing? I feel like that's, that's it, right? And then the aromatics. So you can never have enough aromatics in my opinion. So I always get a ton of scallions, chop up a ton of scallions, 
and cilantro, um, garlic. And so I get like pre-peeled garlic to save some time. Um, and then, and then you kind of like figure out what you want to cook, right? So again, no rules. The world is your oyster. You can cook whatever you want. Um, typically I'll have like your proteins, right? So you've got meats or seafood, you know, any kind of like fish balls, protein, kind of things like tofu, right? And then you've got vegetables, um, maybe some starches, maybe some noodles. And that covers all the bases, right? So um, I personally, like I love like really nice sliced meats. So um, the trick to that is like, if you, you know, if you have a butcher you go to, you can get them to really thinly slice your meats for you. So you can have beef, you know, pork, lamb, um those are like the typical meats and proteins and um then you've got um seafood so you can literally take like fresh fish slice it up um uh you know shrimp any kind of shellfish crab crab legs scallop you know if you want to go fancy you can do like really nice premium seafood um and then there's this like in between of like meatballs, right? Beef meatballs, uh, seafood meatballs. Um, I got some, what did I get? I got some like assorted balls earlier. Um, so here is my sliced meat. This is round uh, beef eye round sliced so it's like pre-sliced already so if you go to your grocery asian grocery store they usually have a section that's like kind of reserved for hot pot meats right so it's really easy to just pick that up about like ten dollars or a pound um and then i also got a bunch of balls so these are different types of balls there's like lobster balls they're not real lobster it's imitation lobster uh shrimp fish and then they have balls that are stuffed with roe, stuffed with cheese. It's really fun. Um, and if you, I'm trying to think, if you're near like a 99 Ranch or H Mart, you should be able to find this. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, if there's like an even fancier place, you can make your own fish balls and like shrimp balls. It's not impossible to make. These are actually pretty laden, I would say, with preservatives. Um, but if you wanted, you could make your own. And the way to do it, it's, it's very laborious. You have to like pound your protein for a really long time. Pound it until it's springy. And you've got like the that texture of bounciness and then you can form that into a ball. And you can do that with shrimp. You can do that with, um, with, um, with fish, any type of like fish. With shrimp, um, sometimes at a really fancy hot pot restaurant, they will give it to you just like not even formed into balls just like a, a a plate of paste and so as the hot pot is cooking you just take your plate of the paste and just like kind of scoop it in using a spoon right so it, it becomes like more just like haphazard type shapes not like a perfect round but that's okay because the ridges and you know those parts are the most fun parts um yeah love the shrimp paste is it okay to use uncooked starches like fresh noodles? Yeah, yeah. Um, I I I tend not to use like wheat noodles in my hot pot just because, you know, when you cook wheat noodles, the 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 the, the starch kind of comes off into the soup and makes it really thick and makes the soup really gloopy. So I avoid those usually, but I love using things like. Um, vermicelli you know rice noodles and vermicelli and like sweet potato noodles japchae and in, in the korean um those don't depart that same type of starch yeah um tteokbokki that's like the korean rice cakes those are fine i think it's like when you are using like fresh or even dried wheat noodles the wheat departs this sort of starch right which which makes the um 
soup a little muddy and maybe not so nice. Yeah, that's my personal opinion, but it's totally doable. Like when you go to Heidi Lao, that chain, and they do the noodle dancing, you know what I'm talking about? The noodle master comes and do, do the dance. Um, they're using wheat noodles and it's totally fine. Uh, but then if you are doing that, maybe like wait until the end, towards the end of cooking hot pot so that it doesn't muddy up your broth in the beginning. Noodle dancing. Uh, maybe someone can Google a video of Heidi Lau noodle dancers. <laughs> yeah, we can definitely save the chat and share it with the recording. Yes. I have one question. Like if we're putting in like dumplings or like a shrimp ball or something like that, is it better if it's frozen or if it's thawed or does it matter? Um, so it does not matter. And also I think it depends. Let me see. So if you, um, okay. So let's say you have frozen dumplings in the freezer. You do not have to thaw a dumpling before you cook it. Mm -hmm. Right. That's just like a rule in general, whether you're doing hot pot or not, do not thaw it because, you know, it's got raw meat inside, presumably. So like, you don't really want it sitting, mm -hmm. um, throw it right into the pot. And, but like, if you had just made your own dumplings and it was fresh and it hasn't been sitting that long and it's just like, it's not frozen, pre-frozen, that's also fine. That's, that's totally good. Um, shrimp, like these like fish balls and stuff straight from the freezer, totally fine. Okay. Again, you're like cooking it for, for a really high temperature. Um, so it'll, it'll be fine. The way that you can tell whether it's done or not, Typically, if it floats, it's done, but also not like as soon as it floats, because as soon as it floats, the inside still might be raw. So mm. um, wait, I would say a good like 30 seconds to a minute before you fish it out. Um, or, you know, I mean, you'll you'll know if you like bite into it. And, you know, if you're at home and you're just having hot pot, you bite into it, it's still kind of raw. You can put it back in, you know. <laughs> if you're out with friends maybe maybe not but um yeah yeah um Thanks. let's see and then okay so other things that I like to put into it mushrooms I love mushrooms I love enokis these are the type I eat the most uh any kind of mushroom works um I think I have also wood ear mushrooms somewhere here. So wood ear, oh yeah, here. So if you can see, it is like a fungus. It's very crunchy. It um, has a lot of ridges. It really absorbs flavor very well. Um, it's a texture thing. You know, this by itself doesn't really taste like much, but it's, it's, it's an amazing texture uh, if you're into that kind of thing and uh, very healthy as well. So I will use, like today I just got enoki and wood ears, um, but shiitakes, and then to flavor your broth, you can also use dried shiitakes. So um, the Japanese like to put, like to make dashi, right? So, you know, dashi is usually like um, bonito flakes, kombu, kombu, which um, is just dried seaweed. Uh, where's my kombu? So it's like these dried sheets and you can rip it into a little, like tear it into little bits and put it in your soup and it creates really nice umami. Um, and then they'll typically also put in, um, what goes in dashi? So bonito flakes, kombu. I'm having a brain fart. It's one more thing. Um, some shiitake, shiitake, dried shiitakes, exactly. Thanks. Um, so dried shiitakes, I love because, and the difference between dried and fresh, just so you you all know, is dried anything is more concentrated flavor, right? So you're basically the moisture has left, and what's left in the mushroom is pure concentrated flavor. So when you're making things like broths. And even like when I'm cooking, usually I rarely use fresh shiitake just because it's kind of like flavorless compared to uh, dried. 
the way that the way to use dried is to rehydrate it, right? So once you rehydrate uh, dried shiitakes, it's still it's softer. Now you can work with it better, but it's still got the same concentrated flavor. So that's a tip. Um, so you can use dried shiitake. What else? Um, this. Do you guys know what this is? No. This is rock sugar. Okay, so the recipe that I have in the cookbook calls for rock sugar. Um, to be honest, I don't know why rock sugar is better. It, it just is. It just tastes better. It's not as sweet. I think it's the 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 crystal crystalline formation of it. it all it is is sugar cane and water. But the way that it forms, it kind of like gives your food more of a caramelized flavor, less like stark sweetness from something like white sugar and um i don't know it's kind of fun so i love cooking with rock sugar uh, and it's really good in things like soups or braises so i'll make like um tea eggs you know tea eggs uh is basically you know a hard-boiled egg that's like cooked further in um tea soy sauce and kind of like a, a bunch of aromatics. And typically, you know, it's got a touch of sweetness. This is the kind of sugar to use, not white sugar. Um, and then same with like a, a braise. So if you've got my cookbook, there's a recipe for braised, like red braised pork belly. And that one has, uh, uses this. And this is kind of key in that recipe because, um, that pork belly, you end up with this beautiful, shiny, sweet and savory glaze on top of the pork. And that glaze can only be achieved with rock sugar. All right. And um, yeah. And so this is, <clears throat> goes into the hot pot food base as well. Um, yeah. Tea eggs are so good to have around as a snack. I know. <laughs> um, so Swa, my new restaurant that I opened on Larchmont in LA has tea eggs for sale. And that was because um, I just really missed, you know, in Asia, when you go to a grocery store, or when you go to a convenience store, any 7-Eleven, any like Family Mart, which is like the Asian uh, convenience store, you can get freshly made tea eggs as a snack. And it's just like healthy, tasty, a quick bite. It's amazing. Yeah. So we have that at Swa. Okay, back to more ingredients. Tofu balls. I love tofu in all its forms. So I usually have at least three types of tofu <laughs> at my hot pot. So um, most basic kind, just tofu, right? I'll do soft because I like the texture. You can also do medium. You can do firm. I mean, I, I don't recommend firm just because I feel like it's firm tofu to me is really only for like pan frying. Um, I, I just like soft textures much better. It means it'll break a bit more, but that's okay. Like it's, you know, just be a little careful. Um, soft tofu. Then fried tofu balls. This is so good. I don't know like how they, I mean, I guess they just like cut it up and, and just fry it. You could probably do it yourself or you can just buy it from the grocery store. This is usually in the refrigerator. Um, and what I love about this is the, is the texture. So tofu itself, um, tofu itself is, is uh, you know, flavor light, right? Like there's good tofu where the flavor is amazing, but for the most part, tofu doesn't taste like much uh, unless it, I mean, it, it tastes like whatever you put it in, right? What, whatever you season it with. Um, so it's really, when you talk about different types of tofu, it all comes down to texture. So for me, fried tofu balls is an essential part of hot pot. It's just like that extra, um, it's not crunchy. It's like, I don't know, crispy, I guess. And then on the inside, the tofu has kind of like holes in it. Um, and, and so it soaks up the soup base really well. Yeah. That's one of my faves. Okay. This third, third type of tofu, dried bean curd rolls. 
this comes in a lot of different forms as well. The one I have in my hands is like a roll, as you can see, it almost looks like um, a cinnamon stick. And right now this is dehydrated. So what you could do is just like literally, I mean, you could rehydrate it first by putting it in a bowl with some hot water and then it'll become faster to cook in the actual hot pot. You could also just like throw it in the hot pot. It just takes longer. Um, and you'll find it in different forms as well. Sometimes it comes in a knot, like they'll, they'll take this while it was still wet and then form a knot and, and let that dry. Um, there's also sheets. The sheets are typically not for hot pot. They're for different things. Like you can use the sheets to roll up like a spring roll, let's say, um, kind of like, um, kind of like a spring roll, but instead of a wheat flour wrapper, you're using tofu. Um, another tofu that I don't have here right now, but um, I love, and you can actually make that at home, is you take regular tofu, and let's say you cut it up into cubes, and then you put it in your freezer. So frozen tofu, have you guys had frozen tofu before? Frozen tofu, you gotta try it. It's so good. Again, different texture, right? You've got, um, what happens is when tofu gets frozen, the water content goes inside and like, it, it kind of expands it, right? So then um, it comes out looking like a sponge. So it's like spongy. It's super fun. It's a really fun spongy tofu texture. Yes, try it, try it at home. All right. What else? Starches. I love yam noodles. These are also known as konjac noodles. So konjac noodles are um, this like really popular diet food now, you know, because it's famously like negative calories or something. Like it's literally zero calories. This one pack has 15 calories. Um, and like literally nothing in terms of like nutrition fats, but I think, no, it is, it is nutritious that it, it's konjac. It's something, I don't know what it's made of. Does someone know? It's like sea, seaweed or something. No, that doesn't, yam, it's made of yam. I just said that it's a yam noodle. Um, it kind of smells a little fishy when you open it and it's preserved in water typically. It smells a little fishy, but if you like rinse it a couple times under water, it's fine. Um, and it doesn't taste fishy at all. It actually tastes like nothing. Um, and, but it fills you up. Like when you eat it, you do get full. It's not like, you know, if, so it feels like you're eating something substantial. It's just like really healthy because almost zero calories. Um, what else? What else do people like to eat with their hot pot? <clears throat> Any other ideas? Chris likes greens. Uh, Chris was going to say some I usually some kind of greens I'm throwing in or yeah. I'm doing some kind of like chaos cooking. I just kind of go through my pantry and my freezer and my refrigerator like what do I have? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hot pot is a really great way to clean out your fridge for sure. Um yeah, I usually have some kind of frozen like meats or meatballs or, you know, um, or, you know, dumplings right in, in the freezer. So just a really fun way to do that. And veg, veg is some of the best parts of hot pot. So I have two different kinds here. <clears throat> this one is like a, um, some kind of like, it's, it's, it's smaller than a regular bok choy. And I like that because in hot pot, you kind of want more leafy greens, I want to say, because you don't want to, it to take so long to cook. So you don't want any vegetables that have got like super big, like stems and stalks. Um, I mean, you can, but so I picked up this like small bok choy. And then another one that I love is this one. Do you guys know what this vegetable is called? Any guesses? Anything? 
I have no idea. Hannah thinks it's mustard greens. It kind of looks like arugula. Is it vines or arugula? Chrysanthemum, Yolanda was that saying? Yes. Who said chrysanthemum? Elizabeth? Yolanda oh. did. She did it in a direct message oh. to me, um, but she it was all Yolanda. Nice. Yes. Chrysanthemum greens. Um, so it also is called Tong Ho. So when you go to the grocery store, they might not label it chrysanthemum greens. They might label it Tong Ho. So T-O-N-G-H-O. Okay. And so it's mostly the leafy parts and then like kind of a thin stalk, but it has such a, almost like a sesame type flavor. Mm. I just love it. It's so good. And it takes literally no time to cook. So when you're, um, when you're like swishing it around in your hot pot, honestly, like five seconds, it's great. Um, other greens that you can use, uh, spinach, pea shoots, um, a really popular one, Gailan. Yeah. Gailan has a bigger, really thick stalk. So maybe you want to like cut the stalk a little bit. So it's less um, time to cook. Um, you can put any kind of green in there. Typically when you go to the Asian store and I love like Asian greens, there's a whole section of my cookbook dedicated to greens, Asian greens. Um, there's, it's more just like stuff like Tong Ho, uh, pea shoots, um, water spinach is also really nice. Water spinach. Um, what's the other name for water spinach? You guys know what I'm talking about, right? It's like the hollow stock with the, the long leafy greens. Um, watercress is great in hot pot. Chinese broccoli. Yeah, you can put broccoli, you can put um, cauliflower. What else can you put? Um, oh, I was gonna say, uh, what's one? Celtus, Celtus. Okay, so Celtus, you guys know Celtus? It's like this giant stock. Um, there's a recipe, there's a few recipes in the cookbook for Celtus, but a giant stock, and it's called Celtus because it's considered a cross between a celery and a lettuce. Um, it grows lettuce leaves on top, and those leaves are called achoy leaves, uh, and you can eat those leaves, but you typically are focused on the stock. Stock is really thick, you want to cut, kind of peel the thick outer layer of the stock to reveal the in inner layer, which is like this emerald green, like beautiful, juicy, crunchy stock, kind of like um, the stem of a lettuce, right? But much more flavorful. And it's become really, really popular in the U.S. in the last couple of years. Um, Celtis, you can eat that in hot pot by thinly slicing. So typically it's like you take the stock and then maybe you can use the mandolin and just like slice it, maybe like, I don't know, one or two centimeters thick. And then that becomes a really nice uh, thing to, to cook in your hot pot. Um, has anyone here, has everyone here heard of Celtis? Not heard of Celtis? Tried it? I've had it at restaurants, but it's really hard to find in Colorado, like even at the Asian grocery stores. Yeah, it is tough. I think um, New York and LA, there's more and more like Asian farms and you can find it at like farmer's markets sometimes. Um, it's become a really popular ingredient in fine dining, if you can believe that. Um, uh, Dan Barber at Blue Hill Stone Barns started cooking with it when after he discovered it. Um, <laughs> and uh, then... The last time I ate at uh, in New York at 11 Madison Park, um, they had Celtus four ways. There was a Celtus cocktail. There was a Celtus oh. apple. It was Maine. Um, so Celtus is having its moment, even though it's been, it's like a peasant food from China, but now it's being served at like fine dining restaurants. So it's like, it's insane. It's even in Nova Scotia. I'm like, what? Why can't yeah. Denver get their shit together? <laughs> yeah, but it's super nutritious. I love it. I love the flavor. Um, I love cooking with it. There's 
a recipe in my cookbook for saltus um, salad. So what you can do is you can even lightly pickle saltus the same way you would pickle cucumber, just with a little bit of salt. And um, it's so delicious. It's crunchy. The rawness of the saltus flavor goes away once you put the salt in it. And then it becomes kind of like soft, like pliable, but maintains the crunch. Uh, and it's just magical. I love it. Um, yeah. What else? I know. Do we have a hard stop at four? Or what's, what's the deal today? Or is it 4.30? Um, we definitely have a hard stop at 4.30 PT. Um, but okay. yeah, I don't know if it, people have other questions. We what? can keep going or whatever. We can just have a chat. Um, you know, if anyone's cooking and like has a specific question, let me know. Um, I've, I'm planning to eat hot pot tonight, so I am going to be putting some of this stuff together. But oh, um, dobanjang. Dobanjang. So that's another ingredient that's really essential in Sichuan hot pot. Um, we have our version on our site that's like the three year aged one. You can use any dobanjang you find. Ours is obviously going to be better, but it's also <laughs> pricey, right? But it, a little bit goes a long way, but it is pricey. So if you go to the grocery store, there's like cheaper versions. Like a, you can get a little tub for like, I don't know, five, six, seven, eight dollars. Um, ours is like 500 grams. It's a big block and it's uh, $25, I think. Um, but, you know, we're the only ones that carry it. It's the only aged Dobanjang really on, like, on the market. Um, and what happens when you age it is it basically develops a super, super complex, deep flavor. The color changes too. It changes into this dark amber color. Um, and dobanjang is an essential ingredient in Sichuan cooking. It's essential in hot pot, essential in mapo tofu, essential in twice cooked pork, a lot of these classic dishes. Um, and so if you've had ours, you know, like it's just on a different level. Um, and the way that it's made is uh, by fermenting fava beans with chili peppers and with specifically with Argentel chili peppers, the type that we use in our chili crisp um, and salt. Uh, and it's kept in this like trough or like a like a clay pot, clay urn. And every day this old man will go out and like mix it, mix it up so that like it kind of gets even distribution and like exposure to like the elements. And that's how it's traditionally made. Um, nowadays, that traditional method, you see less and less because it's much more industrialized. And they'll have these machines that are doing the turning these kind of like robotic or like, you know, trucks or whatever that have these attachments. And it's in these giant trucks that they go up and down and kind of like flip it constantly. But the old school version, which is the version that makes our three-year aged version is still done by hand. Um, we'll have to sometimes put on like one of the blog posts, like some of your photos of those, because it is really yeah. incredible. Yes, we have some content. We just went to China uh, I mean, we've been to China a few times this year and uh, I've got some great video content. Um, we should like post it on social as well. Yeah. You know, some ingredient highlights. Um, and then, yeah, but the type that you get in like grocery stores here, you'll find it's a lot redder and it's a lot younger. So they might be only fermented for like one or two months rather than three years, right? So it's still quite bright in color. And sometimes you want that bright color. Sometimes you want a brilliant red rather than like a darker amber. Um, and But that's just for, for looks. Flavor itself, it will be a lot more savory and sharp and not so deep and umami, okay? Um, you can also mix it. Like sometimes when I make mapa tofu, I'll mix half, like whatever the recipe calls for, I'll do half our aged obanjang and half the younger one so that you have a mixture of like good flavor and also the color. 
Chris um, has a really good question about like, what if you don't have like a hot pot, like electric hot pot? Like okay. how, how should you cook this? Okay. So hot pot as like a food, as like a, you know, uh, an experience is enjoyed at the table, right? So you like, you're cooking while you're eating. So you do need some kind of a thing at the table. So just get a portable stove, right? Like, um, like one of those uh, gas ones or an electric one. That you can get on Amazon for $40. I want to say $30 to $40. Um, so once you have that, you can cook with any pot, right? So you just have that in your table. And depending on how many people you're eating with, right? If you're just like two people, just, just one is good. If you're four people, still just one is good. If you're six to eight people, you might want two. So like four, you know, three to four people per pot. Um, and you can use any kind of pot that, you know, if it's an induction stove, then you might have to use a pot that only works on induction stoves. Not every pot works. If it's, um, if it's a, a gas stove, really any type of pot works. And uh, sometimes I use a donabe, you know, like one of those Japanese like clay, clay pots, because um, I find they're really good for soups. They like, they, they keep the flavor of the soup really, really strong and nice. Um, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, this sounds like super white, but like, would a crock top work? Like crock pot? Yes. Yes. I mean, it just depends on the, so the other thing to think about is like, how big is your pot and what shape it is? Like, if it's like one of those stock pots that's like super high and narrow, that's probably not conducive, right? To like fishing stuff out and cooking. So think more shallow and maybe wider. You know, so it's just easy access. Fondue pot. Look at these yeah. ideas. I mean, fondue is just French cheesy hot pot. It's the same. <laughs> so, yes. Um, instant we pot. Do. pot. You can definitely do it on instant pot. Um, but again, it's like, it just depends on how easy you, you want to access, you know, because a lot of like Chinese hot pots, what they are is like, they're really wide mouth. And then more kind of open, right? So you can see what's inside. You can fish around in it. Um, I'm trying to find, I don't know where it is right now, but like I have these like um, uh, slotted spoons. Those are really handy, right? Because you wanna, if you don't have a slotted spoon, you can also use one of these, right? So just like makes it easier to fish the ingredients out rather than fishing around with chopsticks and like losing it, you know? Because when there's a lot going on, you don't wanna, lose your forget about your ingredients um one thing i will say about like the order of cooking as well oh yeah so like our hot pot base this uh this pot it, it's basically like this you've got a the pot itself which is detachable from the base right there's no flame or anything so we basically like plug this in and then um, you plug this in and then you just put this on top and all your soup and stuff goes in here. The hot pot base usually comes with like um, one or two, one soup base. And one of the soup bases inside, there's like two packages. So you can, it, you can use it like twice. Um, and the ease of like using a pre-made hot pot base. So you just add water and that's it. You don't even need to add stock because the base is so and so flavorful stock would just probably make it too much so literally just um water and then put the lid on top and uh it'll just start cooking it'll and then turn it up it'll just start boiling once it's boiled that's when you can start putting ingredients in do you worry about anything overcooking in your hot pot? So good question. I was uh, just about to address the order of cooking of your ingredients. So if you think about the order that you should put stuff into your pot really just depends on like, what is the ingredient? What does it look like? How long do you think it'll take to, to cook? How long do you think it can stand to be in the broth for? 
without overcooking. So every ingredient is different. So what I would do is like, think about stuff that doesn't get overcooked, in my opinion, is like tofu. Yeah. So, and mushrooms, right? And so I'll put like some mushrooms and, and tofu and like maybe woodier and stuff in there because it can just stand to be in there for a long time. It'll just soak up the flavor. Shiitakes will keep flavoring the broth, right? So as you're cooking, so like the earlier you put it in, the better. Um, fish balls as well. Yuba, exactly. So all kinds of soy products. So I'll just put a ton of that in. And then, um, and then, you know, and then, and then you'll always have like that to, to reach for. And then once people start to like, once the water really starts to boil, you can start putting in the meats. The thing with meats is you don't really want to drop it in because you'll lose it. You'll forget about it. It'll be overcooked, especially the thinly sliced hot pot meats. You literally just swish it on your chopstick in the, or like on a slotted spoon in the broth until it's no longer pink and you'll see. And, you know, if you want it to be a bit more well done, you can leave it in a little longer, but typically I'll just wait till it's no longer pink and then eat it as soon as, as soon as that happens, right? Cause it's still a little tender, um, but it's fully cooked and it's like totally safe to eat. Um, so don't lose your meats and uh, either use a slotted spoon or you can even just use your like eating chopsticks. Um, it's not a big deal because you're cooking it in really high temperature water. So even if you're just like, you, it's your chopsticks that you were just using, you can, it's, it's, um, it's safe to, to just use that and switch the meat around. Um, other things like uh, seafood, probably the same, like you don't want to overcook that. So just keep an eye on it. Um, typically, oh, and then I love quail eggs as a topping as well. And that's something that can sit in your hot pot for a long time. So quail eggs, you would pre-cook it, pre-boil it. Um, but the easier route is just to buy it um, pre-cooked already, which they have in Asian stores. Um, it will it will sit for a really long time and it'll just get better over time because it'll absorb all the flavors of the soup. Mushrooms, I already said mushrooms. Um, and, uh, and, then I, and then I think usually like people put vegetables in last. Um, and uh, that again, depending on what type of vegetables, if it's like, um, if it's like saltus, like we were talking about, then you can put it in a little bit earlier and it'll take a little bit more time to cook. But, um, and, and, you know, if it's like cauliflower, things that are more substantial, if it's leafy greens, just right at the end, five seconds, swish it around and it's done. When done, can I save or freeze the hot pot broth? Um, it depends on how clean it is. I think it depends because sometimes you'll just use your judgment because, you know, if there's been a lot of cooking, a lot of people like eating from it, a lot of different meats and this and that being cooked in it, it can get a little muddy and not as pleasant as it was when you start off, right? So it's up to you. I don't think there's any harm in saving it. Maybe only once though, you might not want to reuse it like several times. Um, but, you know, uh, typically I would say it doesn't taste as good, the broth um, at the end of a hot pot versus at the beginning. Yeah, you could, you could. Um, and especially if you like made extra broth to start off with and you didn't, you know, you didn't uh, cook with it yet, you know, then, then totally, yeah. Mm -hmm. What else? What else? Hmm. Any questions about the spices? Like, is anyone actually gonna attempt to make their own hot pot or, or no? They're just like, you're just gonna. <laughs> I did. 
Oh, wow. Okay. Tell us about it, baby. It's all night. It's good. Nice. You know, the other day, I wanted to have hot pot, and I didn't have any doven jai at home. And I also didn't have any of these spices at home. The only thing I had was, okay, I can, I can, you know, I mean, it's really just like putting a bunch of spices in here. I can get to that. Um, but the only thing I had the other day was uh, this like pickled mustard green and the Korean um, gochujang, okay? And Korean gochujang is very different from dobenjang, but I was like, okay, it's close enough. So I literally just used this and I think I put some like broth in it and uh, pickled mustard greens and that was it. And it was delicious. So you really can do anything for your hot pot base. That's, that's the point. Okay. Any sides? Any sides? Um, I mean, you could. I mean, usually people get so full off of hot pot because you don't realize how much you're eating. You're just like, you just keep grazing and keep cooking and keep eating and it just disappears. So you don't know how much you ate. But, and so people usually overeat and like get really full. Um, so I don't, I don't typically put any sides out, but you could, like, if you wanted to like start it off with like, some fried dumplings or some noodles or like a salad or something, you know, you could, you could do that. Can you read out the questions, Elizabeth? So I can... um, yeah, these are more just comments right now of like using frozen homemade stock in the freezer. So it's easy to add spices and aromatics, which I love. Homemade stock is a lovely thing. What other questions we got? We can expand beyond hot pot too. Um, we got about 10 more minutes. So want to make sure any questions get answered here. Okay. One thing I'll say, okay. So basically hot pot, the recipe, as you see, there's like all these different spices, right? Um, the first step was to grind up all your spices. Now, I don't even think you need to grind it up. You can grind it up. But a lot of hot pot places in China is just whole spices. So if you're feeling lazy, don't even worry about that. Okay. What else? <laughs> Half the bark. I'm just like gathering all my ingredients right now for this. Any questions? Um, I'll also post again this recipe so you guys can reference it, but it's also in Jing's cookbook that I will also link to. Yes. Got some dried peppers here. Um, and then also like keep in mind the type of dried pepper you use will dictate how spicy it is. So these ones are pretty spicy. It's more spicy than the Argentel that we sell. The Argentel that we sell is really mild and fruity and really nice. Um, but I'm gonna go crazy today with these. <laughs> so about four. Spicy day. Yep. Um, oh, let me grab some sip on pepper. So trippy peppers. I'm just gonna chuck it in whole. You really don't need to. You don't need to grind it. Um, this is so, oh, so potent. <laughs> you know, put a bunch in. And also, you don't need to follow this exactly. As long as you have like the, the, the idea, it's like, you know, 20 grams of citron pepper or like a handful. It really depends on how potent your citron pepper is as well. All right, next. This is close. What what if the dried peppers look like a chili de arbol? Um, is that a similar kind of pepper to the one that you're putting in there? This or is not chili de arbol, but you can use chili de arbol. It's very similar. Yes. 
Are the ones that I'm using, I think, are spicier than Chili Darbal. Chili Darbal are very similar in flavor, I think, to Argentale. To our Argentale with citron. Oil. I never thought about that. Hmm. Uh, you'll find it at any Mexican store. I also just saw some Chili Darbal at, at my 99 Ranch. So, cloves. I feel like something you've taught me too is if like your spices have been in the pantry for a while, like add more because it's probably not going to be super fresh. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So if they've been in the pantry for a while, that means they're not fresh and uh, they probably lost a lot of their flavor. Fennel, this is fennel. Just like a little, a little bit of fennel. Is fennel good for a digestion? Yeah, it is. It is used in Ayurveda for digestion purposes. This is cumin. Uh, cumin is pretty prevalent in citron cuisine. So we'll put a little bit more. And then, then we've got bay leaves. Bay leaves, bitter soups. Hey, sorry, my dogs. The dogs want some hot pot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, cardamom, again, is also used. Uh, I actually don't have any cardamom here, so I'm just going to skip it. It's totally fine. Um, but bay leaves, four or five bay leaves. So just a little handful. Um, what else? Got rock sugar. So put that in. So basically, I'm, I'm putting in these ingredients, and uh, what we're going to do is, you know, it, it depends on what vessel you're using, right? So I've got this hot pot thing here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it on, and without putting any liquid in yet, I'm going to start toasting it. I'm going to start, like, basically frying it. And if you were doing this with a wok, if you were doing this in the instant pot, you would do the same thing. You turn it on, right? And then you would, when, when the dry spices are in there, that's when you start to over medium heat. Um, you would start to kind of toast it. And then <clears throat> depending on the type of oil that you use, right? Like rapeseed or beef tallow, or just, you know, I would say use a high high heat oil. So maybe olive oil is not like, Unless it's a <clears throat> olive oil that can take a lot of high heat. Um, but yeah, try to go for, I think grapeseed is a high, high, um, has a high smoke point, just a, another oil that has a high smoke point. And um, so once you like toast your spices or whatever, move that aside, bring your oils in and then start to um, heat up your oils. So once that's kind of sizzling, that's when you put in your aromatics. So ginger, garlic, scallions, and then you cook that until it's fragrant. So it's all about like getting, pulling the fragrance out of your ingredients, right? And you do that before you add any liquid um, because once you add liquid, then you're just boiling, right? Um, so after the aromatics, that's when you add in the dobanjang. And then you add in, you know, the chili oils or chili crisp if you're using chili crisp. And again, that is to get the fragrance out. Um, and then that's when you kind of put the spices back into the pot. Um, after you do that, you start to introduce liquid. You've got um, Shaoxing wine. So this is one thing I didn't show you guys, but Shaoxing wine is like Chinese cooking wine. So uh, a little bit of this. Um, and uh, the rock sugar, now, now that you have the liquid in there, you can add the rock sugar and that'll help to melt the sugar, right? If you put the sugar in when it's all dry, then that won't do much. So that'll start to melt the sugar. Um, and uh, and that's that's basically it. It'll be kind of like a a paste of sorts, right? And super concentrated. 
And so once you are, are cooking that paste, once you're, you know, really blending all the flavors together, um, that's when you are pretty much done with your soup base, right? And so in that time, you can prep your other ingredients, you can cut your vegetables, prepare it and like place it in like a nice, you know, presentation because presentation is, is going to be important. You're, you're going to be sitting with your friends and family and enjoying it, you know, just um, it's probably best to take it out of its packaging, even though I've been known to eat it straight out of the packaging at the table, but, um, you know, plate it. And uh, once you're ready to eat, you've got your pot, with your food base, now you pour in your 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 broth right or or water if you're using that um and bring it to a boil but that's basically like the way to do it all right um any questions i'm turning on my pot so i can start toasting some of my my uh spices right now Peppers. Okay. If anyone does want a recording of this, um, send me an email at elizabeth at flybyjing.com. Um, I'll also post again the link to the blog post we made um, just so you guys have it. And I can send that to you, anyone that wants it emailed as well. So I'm putting in some kombu right now, some dried seaweed into the pot as well. I'm just like, I can feel the pot is getting warm now, just like tossing it around. Um, getting the spices nice and toasty. Here's my star anise, love star anise. But like I said, again, this is a very specific citron recipe and, and even like within Sichuan there's so many different ways of doing it right so there's no rules there's no rules at all this is just if you want to do something that um you know is quite is quite Sichuan in nature the main things that you got to think about is do I have the spices do I have the doubanjang and the chili oil and the aromatics like those are kind of the foundations right so if you have those, it doesn't matter what spices you have. It doesn't matter what brand of chili oil you have. It doesn't matter, you know, as long as you have those aromatics, and by aromatics, I mean ginger, garlic, scallions, right? And as long as you have a chili oil, whether it's fly by jing, whether it's like homemade, whatever. Um, and as long as you have a doubanjang, because that's like what departs that deep flavor, Again, it could be fly by jings, it could be uh, whatever brand from the store. And then the other spices doesn't it do, doesn't really matter. And you can put as much chili in, in as you want to make it spicier, as little as you want. You know, I've got, I think I'm gonna show you, I don't know if you can see, it's like starting to smoke a little bit, but this is like bay leaves, cumin, citron pepper, I'm gonna turn the heat down a little bit because it's getting a little smoky. Um, seaweed, cassia bark. And it's starting to smell really nice in here. How important to have the shaoxing wine? Not important. It's not important. It's, it's, you know, you can do without. It'll just add a little bit of extra flavor. Okay, so I love this hot pot because it's so easy to just like, cook and just stir fry you just like literally swish it around like this that's so nice that's just in that yeah and one, like, one pot cooking everyone one pot cooking so with this i'm going to now dump it into a bowl so that uh i can clear space in the hot pot for other things and now I've got this bowl full of really fragrant, whew, really fragrant spices. So good. Nice. 
All right. Um, Jane, before you um, go into the rest of this hot pot kind of tangent, but Leanne was wondering how big the walk in our hot walk, walk set is with our place. Did you, do you have that in your kitchen by any chance or has it not shown up yet? I'm still waiting for it to arrive, okay. but um, it looks this big. <laughs> <laughs> it's a standard walk. <laughs> I think it's a pretty standard walk size. I actually haven't seen it IRL. Um, but that like the photos on the website are from an actual photo shoot. So it looks like it's like three jong tall, um, <laughs> which is how we're measuring things now. <laughs> how many jongs is it? Like, <laughs> um, okay, carry on with hot pot. Okay. Yeah. It's a little bit hard to show you what's like in the pot, but we, I will try to like kind of, all right. So oil. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, where is the oil? I, ugh. I don't know if you guys were on the last call, but I'm, uh, I just moved, just moved to Vegas and, uh, my kitchen is not the best stock right now, but make do here. Okay. So I actually only have avocado oil right now, which I'm gonna just use. So I'm gonna spray my, my pot. And then it's heating up right now. Oh, that went everywhere. And, um, Well, we're getting really close to the last five minutes. Do you guys want to like watch me cut ginger and gar garlic or do we want to answer more questions? <laughs> um, any more questions anyone has? Um, we're also going to do some like social content with the hot pot. So you can then also see like the steps of like how, how you build it together. Mm -hmm. um, and in Jing's cookbook, she has a really um, instructive manual for it too. But what I think what I like the most about hot pot is it's just kind of like flexible. Um, and I forget who said it earlier, but like you put everything that's in your um, fridge in it, um, which is really great. And then if it doesn't taste great, you just tweak it. It's kind of like an intuitive cooking kind of vibe. Mm -hmm. Exactly. In the in the hot pot starter set, like the soup base that it comes with, is it do is it recommended to add things to that soup base if we wanted to or is it really just like good to go that one's good to go so that one's basically like it's taken everything that we just talked about and it's already pre-made it right so and it's so flavorful and so concentrated all you need to do is add water you okay. don't need to add stock you could but um all you need is just water okay yeah i just noticed a typo in this book Oh my goodness. How many rereadings did we all do? God damn. Well, how did they miss this? This is literally, there's notes in here. Oh God. <laughs> I'm wondering if it's just my book that I have right now or, but this is insane. Oh my goodness. Okay. Um, um, Charles, totally hear you. Um, well, let's see if we can maybe later get like a video Maybe doing it as you're making it tonight, maybe you could film with your phone, like things going in it. And then we could also attach that to the recording of the Zoom. Um, yep. And then Charles, if you email me, because the way the Zoom screen is set up, it's going to be really hard for Jing to like show you like a top down view. But maybe yeah. she could record it and then we can add it into the video and then you can email me and I'll have it on our YouTube. Yeah, yeah. I'll um I'll I'll do this on I'll set up a thing on my phone. It's just we were delayed a little bit today because I was late from the traffic and then um we have a hard stop at 4 30, but I will set it up and then we'll send it with the recap uh email. But yeah, it'll just be like a top down, just showing all the steps. Um Great. yeah. Yeah, and yeah, just feel free to give us um suggestions for future things like typically like for the last time like I was cooking as, uh, along with talking but 
I think today it was just like there's so much to go over and so much to show that it was a little hard to do it all at once um but no this was perfect this was so good because it was like how do we socialize how do we connect it's in the kitchen over the counter talking while we're cooking right and it's just like and it's stream of consciousness this was so from your soul this was really good for me as a chef too to just kind of be in the kitchen with you oh. like I have a cold right now and if otherwise I would be in the kitchen with you with my hot pot and the coming up and you know riffing on some stuff that's whatever's in my house and whatever insta 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 uh instacart delivered but mm -hmm. this was really really good i just want to thank you for doing this this is good i'm hope to be on some more more of these in the future yeah for sure we definitely have more planned um we've got another one planned i think for lunar new year uh what's that one again elizabeth we're gonna do Jong dumplings, um, which is like the Chengdu street food snack that our Jong sauce is made after. And that's gonna be on February 15th. So right after Lunar New Year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That'll definitely be a cook along. Hot pot is just tough because you're all you're just really throwing ingredients into a pot and like that's it. And so a lot of it is is about the explaining one, but explaining like all the all the spices and the ingredients and the method, but um. But yeah, we'll definitely have um, more of these to come and uh, appreciate you guys all. Yeah, thank yeah. you so much. I'm so excited to try this because as a Christmas present, my husband gave me the hot, the whole set, the same hot pot that you're using <laughs> and the sauces and um, uh, a lot of stuff. So I'm, I'm excited. And so this thing, yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us, everyone. Um, hope to hope to see you at the next one. And like we said, we will be sending out a recap and I will be filming um, with my phone right after I get off this call and we'll give you the step-by-step. -step. Yeah. Thank you all. Thank Thank you. You. I appreciate it. Have a good one. Yeah, you too. Take care. Bye. Okay, so carrying on where we left off, we have the spices that are already pre-toasted. All right, I'm going to put this aside. Now I've got this oil nice and heated. It's like starting to smoke. So what I'm gonna do is put my aromatics in here. I'm gonna toast it. Release the fragrance. Fry it up a little bit. All right, so you wanna just get it fragrant one to two minutes here. All right. And then I've got here my chili crisp and my doubanjang. This is actually a China only format that I just brought back from Sichuan. Um, so it looks a little bit different from the block. Doubanjang. Okay, so we're going to be putting in half a cup, quite a lot. So I'm just going to be using tablespoons and just measuring it by eye. So roughly this is like, this is about half. Okay. It's a lot. Don't put too much because it's quite salty. Now, this needs to get fried up. All the fragrance needs to release. Okay. Then chili crisp. About a quarter of a cup of this, so just a few, a few tablespoons. Make sure you're getting an even application of the oil versus the bits. You do 
as much or as little of this as you want, really. You can use extra spicy if you want it spicier. Now it's starting to really get fragrant. Okay, add a bit of the Shaoxing wine. Okay, half a cup. Again, just use your eyeballs if you want. There's no rule, there's no hard and fast rule here. Okay, now you're kind of like deglazing, right? All right, so we had a rock sugar from earlier. I'm gonna just drop this in, let it do its thing, melt, become one with this nice base. It's gonna take a little bit of time to get it to melt. Okay, so remember this spice blend? Okay, you don't have to uh, grind it up. You can if you want. I'm honestly just gonna put it in because it's totally fine. You're, you're not gonna be like eating these spices anyway. It's just the, the broth that you're gonna be cooking it in, right? So dump it all in. So again, you can if you want, you don't have to. All right, my heat is a little bit high. I'm gonna lower it. Do you see this? This is like, I can't even tell you how good this smells right now. This smells so good. Wow. I think I'm gonna put some more um, citron pepper in here because I don't think we put enough. More citron pepper. I want it to be nice and numbing. And wow. This rock sugar right now is giving everything such a nice glaze. I don't know if you can see it all, but and it smells absolutely incredible. Just trying to get you a better angle. It smells insane. So you want to just make sure that the rock sugar melts. It's still a big chunk over here. And this is it. This is basically it, right? So once this rock sugar melts, this is your soup base. And it's super concentrated, it's very savory, it's very flavorful. And you just leave it aside. You can start making your hot pot right away if you want to, but you really could just leave it aside and like let it sit. And then, you know, when you're ready for hot pot, bust it out and uh, add your stock or add your water. But essentially this is it. Okay, so now my broth is bubbling. I've already put in here a bunch of stuff that can really stand to cook for a long time. So all the tofu, the you know mushrooms, um, it's mostly tofu in here right now. And then um, I'm gonna take a slice of my meat and I'm just gonna swish it around. As you can see, the pink is very quickly disappearing, which means that it's cooking. And so once it gets to like this color, it's pretty much done, right? And so you can cook it longer if you want it a little bit more um, kind of cooked, but I find it a little too tough. So this is done. So that just took like all of, I don't know, five seconds. And then I bring it into my bowl and dip it. And that's a perfect bite right there. Okay, so here is the finished product. 
It is bubbling. I've got so much good stuff in this broth. This is the soup base that you saw earlier with, um, I put chicken stock in here. You can put vegetable stock, you can put water, whatever it is that you want. And you see, I wish I could show you or share with you how good this smells right now. I also put in some more like large scallion segments, the whites, just for added aroma. And then here we've got our meats, we've got some beef, got different kinds of fish balls, mushrooms, different types of tofu. Like I told you, I like my tofu, so there's like four different types of tofu in here. There's also um, woodier mushrooms and cognac noodles. Um, please excuse my paper bowls. I just didn't want to do dishes tonight. And also I don't have that many dishes right now. So I just moved. Um, and here we have our Tong Ho, the chrysanthemum greens, as well as those bok choys that I showed you earlier. And then this is my sauce. So my sauce is soy sauce, black vinegar, chili crisp, sesame oil, garlic, and scallions. And I'm about to put some of this fermented uh, bean curd in as well. Mix it up. That's it. Bon appetit.